Residents in this Eastview neighborhood are upset about the condition of this railroad crossing. One resident even went as far as to contact the company in charge of the upkeep and to his surprise received this letter stating that nothing would be done. Part one of the dam removal project has wrapped up and I'm standing on what used to be the West Milford Dam. As demolition ends, so do the legal efforts of local farmer John Stanger. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Sydney Cooper and we're going to go ahead and dive right into your top stories. A stabbing attack in London has left an American woman dead and five others injured. Police still aren't sure what sparked the violence, but say the suspect may have been mentally ill. The year is 1944, a time when guys and gals often communicated by writing letters. Now imagine opening up your mailbox and finding a letter that was mailed to you 72 years ago. Sydney Cooper visited the area today and joins us live from Wilsonburg now. So Sydney, explain to us what's going on out there. Now community members in this Wilsonburg neighborhood are concerned about the safety of a dog that is living alone in the RV you see just behind me. They say the dog has lived there all winter and now into the summer. Recent events across the country are stoking debate over guns. Some like Donald Trump argue more guns lessen the impact of a mass attack. It's a common conversation here at home, so 5 News is diving deeper into the issue. Parking meters here in West Union are not strictly enforced, but thanks to a new parking order residents will have to carry around their quarters because soon they'll be paying 25 cents for every half hour they're here to avoid illness and even death folks working to clean up towns ravished by last week's storms must protect themselves against possible diseases state and local health officials are now sharing cleanup tips that you too should know in case of a flood emergency it's been announced that more schools in the mountain state will be welcoming students from flood damaged buildings at the start of the upcoming school year with elections just around the corner one county commission candidate says he's concerned about the actions of the commission According to this letter, Al Cox claims that some members of the commission are acting unfairly by boosting the campaign of another candidate. Sharpen your pencil, charge your tablet, and arrive to class on time. Just a few of the things students at Doddridge County Middle School have to remember. Last week was a rough one for Donald Trump after he faced backlash for several incidents that caused turmoil for the party and his campaign. Trump tried to make amends for his actions, but could the media be hurting him even more? If a tornado hit near you, would you know what to do? Like staying far away from windows. Or assuming this protective position. $15,000 worth of heroin was seized and four people were arrested yesterday after investigations by the Harrison County Sheriff's Department Street Crimes and Drug Unit. However, they're still looking for two other people. Did you ever wonder what happens during a meth bus? Today, I geared up with officers from 20 different agencies as they went through a meth lab simulation training. The lawsuit led by our attorney general against the Environmental Protection Agency's Clean Power Plan has been filed, bringing tension to a high point. Is the EPA overreaching with its final rule regulating emission standards, or is it a step in the right direction for sustaining our planet? Mark Gorby will also receive back pay for the time he has missed during the criminal investigation and proceedings. I'm Sydney Cooper. We'll get to those top stories in just a moment. Hard to believe it's already July, and it's looking like it's going to be a nice first day of the month. Luckily, I don't think that's something we're going to have to deal with today. Right, right. Just spotty showers is all we're hearing about so far, but we're going to hand things over to meteorologist Kate Mantich. And I'm Sydney Cooper. Those top stories just ahead. But first, of course, yesterday when I stepped outside, it was a little bit cooler. Later on in the day, that humidity kicked it into high gear. Right, and that's exactly what meteorologist Kate Mantich said was going to happen. Tensions were very high at the Randolph County Commission meeting yesterday. Commissioners voted against putting another education levy on this November's ballot. The commission president says they don't control what the levy goes towards. Their job is to represent the voters. Thanks, Lauren. And switching gears a little bit back to weather. Beautiful weather we've enjoyed these last few days, but could it be changing? That's where we're going to hand things over to meteorologist Kate Mantich. Kate, tell us what we need to know. The Still City-based film Concussion reveals the realities of the long-term effects the brain injury can cause. As the discussion heats up surrounding the NFL's knowledge of the risks, former Pittsburgh Steeler Jerome Bettis spoke exclusively with Five News about the choice or lack thereof he believed the league offered players. Many dream it, few live it, and even less reach the career heights that Pro Football Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis has achieved. But before he was the sixth leading rusher in NFL history, Jerome was just a kid with a choice. I had to make a conscious decision 
at the age of 14 whether I was going to continue uh, as a bowler uh, or was I going to actually want to play football. That choice would change the course of Jerome's life and spark a fire inside the young running back. It brought out something in me that I didn't know was there. So as I started, kept playing and playing, I always wanted to uh, be the best. Jerome managed to suffer few injuries throughout his career, but admits he faced a major concussion while playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I took a hit to the head and it affected me uh, from that game standpoint. Players took lightly the hard hits that would often cause concussions. You know the standard uh, you know, concept in terms of, you know, a guy, you know, got his bell rung and those kind of things or a ding. And though the bus took many dings and hits, he admits he and his teammates weren't aware of the after effects of a concussion. We were naive in thinking that there, was, there weren't any really long-term effects. That was, you know, in essence, uh, a huge problem. A problem that for many years was not fully explored or taken seriously in the NFL. As research and information would later reveal, the effects of multiple concussions was no laughing matter. You start to realize that there was a risk. All players I think ever really want is a choice. And, and I don't think from an NFL standpoint, we were given that choice. Tune in next week as we continue the conversation of concussions with the bus who gets honest about what exactly the NFL knew but didn't share with players. For 5 News, I'm Sydney Cooper. It's called Holidays Without Hunger. Local Food Lion shoppers have the chance to purchase boxes of food that are donated to those in need. Today, the Clarksburg Mission picked up 350 of those boxes. It's exciting uh, to see that the uh, customers get involved. Uh, I mean, really, uh, our associates play a big part, but the customers really make it happen. Shoppers may not know it, but some of the boxes feed children in our community who may otherwise not have access to healthy meals. A lot of the kids um, that go to our public schools, the only meals that they can count on are the free breakfast and free lunch that they get at school. So from Friday evening until Monday morning, some of these kids just don't eat or don't eat very well. Every Friday and during the holidays, the mission delivers backpacks to local schools, including here at Mountaineer Middle School. I spoke with the principal who explains just how many students benefit from this program. We have probably 7,500 or 100 students to take advantage of that program. Uh, we make it pretty, you know, we don't send it to them. They come down and pick it up on their way out the door. Uh, so we know that that food gets home. To the kids and their families, these boxes are an early Christmas gift and one that is greatly appreciated. It means a lot to our kids, and, and I think it means some, you know, a little bit to our parents too. Um, not that there's enough in there to, you know, supply family for a meal for a night, um, but it is a little something extra. Principal Rogers hopes to have the backpack program available for many school years to come. In Harrison County, reporting for Five News, I'm Sydney Cooper.